In this video, we're starting with a standard 80 series Land Cruiser chassis, adding some chassis plates, removing this section and this section to allow for better suspension performance while maintaining a low center of gravity, doing some cutting, welding and grinding before we end up with a finished chassis. We go through a detailed explanation on all this later in the video, so make sure you stick around if you love talking tech. This is the first episode for George's new build. We've already gone through the backstory in detail as well as the plans for the build, so make sure you check out the link in the description below before you get into this video. To recap though, we're building an extra cab style side barra powered 4580 which is focused on off-road performance and will have a pretty trick suspension setup and ideally 500 kilowatts at the wheels. Plan for this build is to do the chassis and suspension work at LCS 4x4 due to the facilities located here like the hoists and the CNC plasma table before it comes back into my shed to do the upper bodywork and engine conversion. Let's rewind now to where it all started a few months ago at LCS 4x4 and get into the build. The first step in this whole process is to acquire an 80 series chassis. We were lucky enough to get a roller so we didn't have to dismantle an 80 series and you can see here we're using a plasma cutter to remove all the body and engine mounts before cleaning it up with a metal chisel and angle grinder to make it all smooth. This is George's chassis as you've seen before, it's cut off all the factory mounts, we've lost uh, half of the rear cross member, the coil hats, the shock mounts all the body mounts, front shock mounts and coil perches. We've left the, the front cross member, it'll need to come out. This cross member will need to come out. The, the, the chassis is still um, constrained. Time to, to lift it onto the chassis table. We've, we've thrown a laser level on it. The, the table's adjustable, so it's sitting true at the moment. So we'll get it on there, we'll measure it up, and then we'll, uh, we'll weld it down. We use the table, say you're doing chassis extensions or major modifications to the rails, uh, where we're putting a shitload of heat through from excessive welding or cutting. We'll set the chassis up, we'll weld the chassis to the table. We'll then add a heap of extra bracing uh, as required, depending where we're working which will allow us to do like excessive modifications uh, to the rail without uh, any warping. Well, with, um, with this, this build, although we're not, we're not actually cutting the entire chassis out in sections, like say you would in a, like you were doing a slammed hot rod airbags or like a C-notch you, where you actually remove an entire section of the rail. We're not doing that on this, but we are taking out the majority of the chassis in a, in a few certain points. This will allow us to, to, you know, to, to weld the chassis into location on the table and there'll be no distortion, no warping as we do all the modifications. Alrighty, we've, we've got the chassis sitting on the table from a a previous 80 chassis we've done, we, we left a couple of different fixture points there. So we've, uh, we've dropped the chassis on where we've tacked it in place for the meantime. It's only tacked lightly. We're gonna take a few more uh, measurements to check that the chassis doesn't have any, there's no twists, everything's square. Uh, what, what we'll do from there is we're gonna throw the, the outer plates on in uh, front and rear. They'll just get tacked on lightly, which will allow us to, to put our, the remainder of our chassis bracing to the table. Uh, once that's done, we'll then go about removing the, the remaining cross members. We can then start putting the, the inner plates and, uh, and work towards uh, building a chassis. We were able to use the 3D scan data Bremer Auto did for us when I did my build to design the front and rear chassis plate. You can see them here highlighted in red. On the plates, we've left plenty of holes for plug welding them to the chassis. And on the front driver's side, we're leaving a hole for the chassis serial number, which we were able to pick up from the scan data. For this build, we'll be heavily utilizing our CNC plasma table. There's a full build episode on the Design and Built YouTube channel, which has all the information about this particular table. Here, we're cutting the chassis plating from 4 mil steel. This is our inner plate. The slightly longer plate is our outer plate. What we'll do is we'll put um, all four of the rear chassis plates together. Well, then we're just going to cut some reference marks in the top and bottom of, of each plate. So as we're, we're fit, um, fitting them off to the vehicle, we can easily square across, make sure that everything's exactly in location. Before we begin welding anything to the chassis, we've stripped back the paint and we're applying weld through primer to ensure we don't get any corrosion long term. Once everything was coated, we could begin tacking the rear plates in location. Connor is doing this bit by bit using clamps as he goes to ensure the plate is pulled up tight to the chassis. 
Once the outer plate is tacked, we can add bracing from the new chassis rail to the table so we can start cutting the rear cross members out. The rear cross members were no match for the plasma cutter and we can now clean up the inside and start working on the inner plates. We're just tacking on the chassis plates now. So you can see here we've got the chassis on the table now and both plates are on either side and you can see we've got internal gusseting running down the rail and that is because we've actually removed a large portion of the rail as you can sort of see here and here. It's really important that we put this internal gusseting in to give the frame the strength required to stop that torsional flexing as well as all the other loads that the frame's subject to as well. So this is a really good visual representation of what we're doing. This is a new frame rail up here and then this is the old one at the bottom. Now, when we chop out this bottom section and we put plates on the top and bottom, this will form the new section of chassis. This bit's really important for the geometry of the triangulated forelink, so we're going to remove this section as well. We're just beveling the edges before we weld in the cross member get a nice penetrated connection. We put the new rear cross member in as well as some temporary cross members and then it was time to start cutting the front chassis plates. Connor's now installing the outer front chassis plates before cutting the front cross member out, installing the inners and then finally bracing the front of the chassis to the chassis table. Now that the front is braced, Connor is plug welding the rear plates to the chassis. There is a lot of welding and grinding in this project so buckle in. We're doing our best to show how much work it is without being too boring. I reckon if I put all the footage in real time, we'd be here for over 10 days. Connor's now fully welding the internal gussets before cutting plates on the plasma to plate the top and the bottom of the chassis on the rear. Once the rear was done, we could move on to the front. So we've just finished all the spot welds on the inside and the outside of the chassis plates. And we've also done some stitch welds on the inside there as well. Now for the exciting part, we're gonna put this top plate on and it's going to form the new chassis rail. Once the top of the front rails were all tacked into place, we could start removing the rear part of the chassis that we didn't need anymore. All right, we've finished all the cutting, pretty much, and we're just gonna knock this section of chassis out. Good job, man. Well done. Shit. What's that boy, Connor? Oh, this thing. It's the old chassis rail, man. Scrap metal now. No good. And of course, the front gets the same treatment. Okay, so the next step is to put this bottom plate on. We've got both sides and the top on now. And we're about to form this to the shape of the chassis using clamps and then give it a few tacks like the top and then weld it all off.
Hi, my name's Connor, this is my prison shank. And for the bottom plate here to keep it nice and straight and corner to corner, we've got a bit of off cutter formula here tacked to our tube. And what we do, clamp it to the side like this. So see our bottom plate is kicking over a little bit. Yeah. So if we clamp that up there, like so. Oh yeah, gotcha. It'll actually pull it over straight. The new frame rails were beginning to take shape and once the back was tacked into place we could begin on the front. Let's talk about weld sequence, like what are you doing when you weld this puppy up? So with the plug welds I'll just try to um, keep it even on both sides to prevent the distortion of the chassis rail, keep it nice and straight. Even though it is fixed to the chassis table you still want to even out your heat as much as possible. So when we put these top plates on, top and bottom will have an even weld, as you can see like there, everywhere, inside and out, top and bottom, and you'll stagger your weld to keep it straight. Because if you just weld the whole top in one go, you'll just want to bow one side really bad. So you even everything out, top and bottom, left to right, and as long as you do that, it should uh, come out pretty straight when we cut it off the table. Now that everything was tacked into place, we could begin fully welding it off before we sanded it back to form the final chassis. As you can probably imagine, there's a lot of welding and a lot of angle grinding here, so sit back and enjoy this fabrication montage. We could now install the rear crossmember bracing which we cut out on the plasma table and folded in our hydraulic press with the V-block. Oh, look at those dime bags, Condog. Oh, you, don't, you don't see him taking photos at all while I was mowing up. <laughs> I was pretty busy welding Rich until you ripped out the camera and started doing your YouTube thing, so I'm having a stubby while I wait for you, mate. Uh, getting ready to put the new front member in, and then we'll slowly start welding out the chassis and then spend a couple of days grinding it. Right, sounds like so much fun. Can't wait. Man, Connor loves the grinder. <laughs> It's probably time to give you all an explanation as to exactly what we're doing here. We've been using the 80 series chassis because it's such a good chassis to start with. They're extremely strong and easy to modify and accommodating for the 40 series body. It also has excellent off-road performance and we've reached the limitations of what we can achieve with an 80 series chassis and that's why we're doing the extensive modification to the chassis to chase that little bit extra off-road performance without making too many negative trade-offs. We're very familiar with 80 series chassis here, so much so that we've 3D scanned one and a big reason for using the chassis as a base is that we've already got a lot of products developed to suit them. Body mounts from McKinnon's Cruisers, the stuff we've developed in-house using the scan data like bull bars, engine mounts, fuel tanks, among other things which will ultimately cut down the design time on this build. The chassis are also readily available and if we want to repeat this we can. The one up behind me here which already has this treatment and we've made some modifications to suit the barra on this exact one. We'll also be able to register the vehicle, which is really important to us for this build, as opposed to building something from the ground up, which has its own set of challenges. So the intention for this build is to be a high performance off-road vehicle. The first thing we're going to do to improve the performance of the suspension is make a longer travel setup. 
This means designing a different rear suspension setup to the traditional five link pan hard found on these chassis. And we're opting for a triangulated four link rear, which means we'll be able to achieve much more travel than before while keeping the diff in a central location. We've got everything in CAD for this build and the main problem we've found with a longer arm triangulated four link setup is that it fouls at the bottom of the chassis right here. So by removing this tiny little portion of frame rail, we'll be able to get much more travel from the four link setup. At the same time, we've taken the opportunity to stretch the wheelbase by 150 mil. For those who don't know, the 80 series chassis is pretty short and it's about 130 mil shorter than a patrol. And for the higher speed off-road, more wheelbase will make this car a little bit more stable and it'll also suit the bigger tires which we're intending to put on it. While we were at it, we've also added an extra 75 mil of up travel by doing these modifications to the rear rail, which is gonna benefit a lot of other things like packaging the coilovers, which we intend to be running and we'll be covering this in a future suspension episode. Everything in suspension land is a trade-off. Everything has compromises, but what we're trying to do here is design a system that has the least amount of compromises for off-road performance. Specifically, we want maximum wheel travel while maintaining a low center of gravity to enhance the vehicle performance. There are other ways to get more wheel travel, like by jacking the car right up. However, this comes with a cost to the center of gravity which is absolutely crucial to the vehicle performance overall. You'll notice we've been doing some modifications to the front of the chassis as well. They're relatively minor in the scheme of things and in comparison to the rear. We're shortening the rails a little bit, bracing them to strengthen them. And then we're also raising them for a better approach angle. We've got the LCS shop truck beside us here, which has progressed much further. And we've been able to prove our design by cycling the suspension on that one before we jumped into this chassis. So we're pretty confident of the overall suspension design. There is a lot going on here and I hope I explained it well. I'll endeavor to keep doing so throughout this build series. Let me know if you guys like this sort of high level explanation or you'd rather get my engineering on and get a whiteboard out for some more in depth stuff. I'm happy to take on some feedback on this one as I know it can be tricky to wrap your head around all of these sort of concepts, but at the end of the day, I'm not quite an engineering explained just yet. All right, enough of that. Let's get back into the fabrication montage. We were now at a point where we could start multitasking and Connor even let me loose with a grinder under his strict guidance. Got two marks on the chassis, so we'll just tap it in till this is flush with the top of the chassis, yeah. and then we will double check it with the tape, make sure it's nice and square before we tuck it off. Why is that clamped to the top? Just to hold it straight, so you don't have to stuff around leveling it. You just bang it in till it's flush and it's perfectly straight. Nice mate, that's top tip. Kind of top tip of the day. Connor's got me on the tools today, and my God, there is a lot of sanding on this chassis. So you can see here, this is a fully welded rail, and what we're doing is having to sand essentially like a sharp corner. So we do that face, that face, the bottom face as well. And then we're putting a 45 degree chamfer on it, sanding at like essentially 22.5 on each, and then we're blending it to get a nice smooth rail. So this is a fully welded but unsanded rail. This side here, we've fully flattened all the plug welds. We've done the side and the top, and then we've started to do a 45 chamfer. And we've still got to do a fair bit more sanding on that one. And I'll show you a finished rail now. This is what the chassis is going to look like the whole way down. And you can imagine that there's a lot of sanding to do to get to this point. But it basically looks like it's come out of the factory. That's our job for the next... Connor reckons there's another 20 hours in it. He's gone back on 20, but he still reckons there's a few.
After what seemed like an eternity of sanding and grinding, the chassis started looking like a chassis again, which was really exciting. You know, it's been a fun day in the shed when... We've pretty much finished all the welding on this chassis, and the last step is to cut it off the table before we can finish off these corners. So we're about to undo these two welds. Now, we're using a chassis table to keep everything straight, and we've got our measurement to the top of the rail and the true measure of whether the chassis table and welding sequence has worked is whether it will move or not once we cut this brace. So let's cut this brace and find out. You can see we just cut the brace out. There was a bit of banging that happened off camera, but we managed to get it out in the end, it struggled. But uh, the good news is, we've officially measured this distance from here to here, same as we did before, and it's pretty much bang on within half a mil, so the chassis table has worked. What are we doing? We are using battery grinders because we've had uh, no power for the last three days, so we're just trying to get it done as much as we can. Thanks, mate. No dramas. Awesome work. So yeah, a bit of a drama in Melbourne the last couple of days. We've had some big storms, but uh, Connor's just out here on the battery grinder. Getting it done. So we've uh, added this brace in here so we can cut this one out. We're gonna do the same on the other side and we're gonna move this temporary cross member to the middle. So then we can finish blending the internal of the rails and just this last section of rail that we can't blend due to this. And then we're gonna chop the backs off. And then what we've got left is just these four holding it on so that we can completely finish the chassis and continue on with the build. We got power back after like four days here at LCS and we didn't want to put out an episode with this chassis half finished. So what we're doing is staying back late on a Friday night. It's like 7 p.m. It's where I want to be on my Friday night, just building cars. And we're going to orby this thing down and get it looking nice and smooth. I'm just stoked to be here. Let's get it done. <laughs> what we're doing here is we're just smoothing out everything. It's already been done with a 30 grit and then this is a 60 grit. Here's another three hours of extremely fun sanding and grinding condensed into about 15 seconds for a YouTube video. And finally, we were able to start cutting off the rear chassis table braces to let our new chassis be free. Excellent. We're just cutting off the rear of the chassis, the remaining, and then we're uh, we're done. We can start working on the rear end, doing all the recovery points and all that sort of stuff. Excellent, mate. How do we go cutting off the brace? Um, yeah, really good. Yeah, no movement at all as the table does its job, so it's perfect. What are your thoughts on this chassis process? <laughs> it's fucking horrible. I hate it, but it's well worth it in the end because of um, all the extra benefits you get from doing this. As you can see, you get quite a nice car out of it. What would you say to anyone thinking about tackling this at home? Just don't. <laughs> Contact LCS. But that means you'd have to do another one. Yeah, well, oh, mate. What do you do? I gotta get paid, don't I? <laughs> And with that final angle grinder cut, the new chassis was revealed and we could finally step back and see the big picture of what we'd been working on for what seemed like weeks.
brings us to the end of the first build episode. There was a power outage in Victoria this week, which really threw a spanner in the works. Uh, and to be honest, we kind of thought we'd have a little bit more done than this, but the chassis is pretty much completed and we're extremely happy with it. We kind of persevered through tough conditions with battery angle grinders, but stay tuned for next episode where we're actually gonna mount the cab and start getting into the build. This is a big build from the ground up. There's gonna be a lot of content coming out over the next year. So if you wanna see more, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thank you for the support.